Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome. Thank you for joining us this afternoon for the CE Sponsor Program 2012 Preparation and Update. And uh, while it is October 4th, we are pretending that it is September 27th, and uh, we will uh, have no audio difficulties today. For those of you that uh, did try to connect with us last week, again, we apologize for the, uh, the audio difficulties that we had. Um, but we're expecting smooth sailing this afternoon. We've got a lot of material to get through, and so I'm just going to go ahead and dive wide in, dive right in, I should say. Today's presentation is presented by Steve Barkley. He is CFP Board's Director of Examinations, and me, Vanessa Williamson, the Manager of Education and Qualifications. Before we get into the uh, content piece of our program, there are a few housekeeping items to go through. Uh, we are recording today's presentation so that uh, some of our CE colleagues who are not able to join us today can catch the webcast when it's posted to CFP Board's website in a couple of weeks. Um, we do plan to have time for questions at the end of the program. Please send your questions through the webinar interface or via email to webinars at cftboard.org. Feel free to submit questions throughout the program and we'll address as many questions as possible at the end of the presentation. <clears throat> I'd also like to take a moment to remind our audience that CFP Board is a certification organization with a mission to benefit the public by granting the CFP certification and upholding it as the recognized standard of excellence for competent and ethical personal financial planning. We'll cover a number of topics this afternoon. We'll begin with an overview of topics accepted for continuing education in 2012. Steve will provide an overview of how CFP Board determines topics accepted for CE. Then we'll shift gears to provide a brief update on the CE sponsor registration process for 2012 followed by comments on program renewals for 2012. And then this will be followed by a few reminders regarding the ethics CE sponsor program changes, which went into effect on October 1st. And again, we'll close the program with questions and answers. With that, I'll begin with CFP Board's topics accepted for CE credit. The current list of subject topics accepted for CE hours has 89 topics with a number of subtopics. The list is multiple pages, but here we show a representation of the first page of the list for illustration purposes only. The subject topics include major topic areas such as general principles of financial planning, investment planning, income tax planning, and retirement planning. The list of subject topics also includes an addendum which addresses items such as attitudes, values, behavioral characteristics, and the like. Effective January 1, 2012, CFP Board's CE Sponsor Program will implement a new list of accepted topics. The topics will be job tasks and principal, uh, job tasks and principal topics. The list of job tasks and principal topics are very similar to the current list of subject topics accepted for CE credit. To reiterate, the list of subject topics accepted for CE will change effective January 1, 2012. Where we currently refer to the list of subject topics, or informally as the list of accepted topics, we'll shift to list of job tasks and principal topics. And speaking with some CE sponsors, I've come to understand that there are some CE providers who believe that CFP Board staff creates the list of accepted topics. Um, the list of accepted topics is actually a product of a comprehensive job task analysis, and the job task analysis is the foundation for CFP Board's exams and the topics that are accepted for CE. So given the change from the list of subject topics accepted for CE to job tasks and principal topics, I've asked Steve Barkley to provide an overview of the job task analysis, the job tasks, and the principal topics. 
Our hope is that this overview of the origins of the job tasks and principal topics will assist you as you create programs either yourself or with your content developers and subject matter experts. Before I turn the program over to Steve, I want to relay that the job tasks and the principal topics are very similar to the list of accepted topics you're all used to. Uh, and with that, I'll turn the program over to my colleague, Steve. Thank you, Vanessa. The general purpose of a job analysis is to determine the requirements of a job or profession and the work, work performed. Specifically, it's a research study that determines the content for a valid examination. A job analysis can be topic focused, determining what a candidate needs to know. For example, the 89 topics associated with the current CFP exam. Or it can be job task focused, defining what a candidate needs to be able to do as a practitioner. The CFP certification program is accredited by the National Commission for Certifying Agencies, or NCCA, through the Institute for Credentialing Excellence. NCCA requires a job analysis to serve as the basis for the CFP certification exam. At CFP Board, a job analysis is conducted approximately every five years. The current exam, for example, is based upon a job analysis conducted in 2004, which provided the topics for the exam beginning in November of 06, running through November of this year. The most recent job analysis completed in December of 2009 identified a new job task-focused exam that will take effect in March of 2012. This job analysis also updated the principal topics that serve as the knowledge base necessary to perform the job task. CFP Board engaged broad-based input on defining and executing the 2009 job analysis. The Examination Task Force, for example, was an external group of experts from the high-stakes testing and certification industry. The Council on Examination is CFP Board's standing council having responsibility for the CFP exam. The Emerging Trends and Financial Planning Task Force was a group of recognized visionary leaders from the financial planning industry who helped identify new and emerging areas in the profession. The Job Analysis Task Force was a representative group of CFP professionals who led the job analysis and determined, with the assistance of an experienced psychometrician, the criteria for including job tasks and principal topics. The goals of the job analysis were to identify the important job tasks performed by CFP professionals and also identify the principal topics in which the CFP professional must be knowledgeable. The 2009 job analysis was more comprehensive than previous studies and identified, one, what a CFP professional does in practice, as in specific job tasks, and two, the content areas or knowledge base necessary to perform these tasks, what we refer to as the principal topics. Two separate surveys were completed, and more than 8,000 CFP professionals participated in the study. Here's a brief summary of the past two job analyses. The 2009 job analysis defined a new exam blueprint effective March 2012, which is based upon eight domains that follow very closely the major steps in the financial planning process and consist of 97 job tasks. Additionally, the updating of topics resulted in identification of 78 principal topics. What's important to remember here is that both, is that both the job tasks and principal topics are viable content areas for CE programs beginning in 2012. Okay, let's take a look at the, the results of the recent job task survey. These are the eight major domains that provide the framework for the new exam. Note the inclusion of communication and practicing within professional and regulatory standards. Each of the domains have associated job tasks. 
Let's briefly take a look at a couple examples. These are the job tasks associated with Domain 3, analyzing and evaluating the client's current financial status. As you review these tasks, they should look familiar in that they, in that they closely align in many instances with the topics and subtopics outlined in the current topic list. Here's the balance of the Domain 3 job tasks. The recent job analysis also updated the familiar topics, the topic list historically associated with the CFP exam. Again, what we now refer to as the principal topics. These are the eight principal topic areas. General principles, insurance planning, investments, income tax, retirement, estate planning, interpersonal communication, and professional conduct and fiduciary responsibility. Again, these should look familiar. They are quite similar to the general topics and addendum topics listed for the current exam. Each principal topic area has a listing of subtopics, all of which are viable topics for CE courses. As an example, here are the topics associated with retirement planning. Should be no big surprises should look very familiar. As a second example, the topic associated with interpersonal communication. These topics are actually included in the current addendum topics. A comprehensive listing of the job tasks and principal topics for 2012 are available for download from CFP Board's website. Thank you very much for your interest and attention. At this point, I would like to return the program back to Vanessa. Thank you, Steve. Uh, appreciate the, the review and the information. Um, again, while the list of job tasks and principal topics um, are accessible online, we will send an email communication to all CE sponsors with direct links to the documents for your ease of reference. Um, but at this point, you, you might be asking, well, what does this mean to me as a CE sponsor? And uh, one of the things that I want to point out and make very clear is that um, it's really important for you all to remember that the job tasks and principal topics are very similar to the list of accepted topics currently in use. And so we expect most aspects of the CE Sponsor Program to remain the same. Um, we uh, just wanted to make you aware of this change in advance as you start thinking about programs for 2012. Um, first of all, the online program application process will remain the same. CE sponsors will submit program applications using their secure online account. They'll continue to use the same web interface. Um, you'll provide brief information about the program, the program title, the description. The CE sponsor staff will review the program application in the same manner that we have in connection to CSP Board's um, accepted topics and other published CE requirements. And we'll continue a 100% uh, program application review process. We'll also continue to have initial program application reviews conducted within seven business days. Again, we're hoping that folks will see this process as being very much the same as what you're used to, using the online system, uh, a response from CSP board staff within seven business days, the email communication letting you know that the program's been accepted and the, the number of CE hours for which it's been accepted. Um, if there's a need for additional information, a member of our staff will continue to send an email communication to you 
uh, to indicate that the program application has been flagged and to request the additional information needed um, in those limited circumstances in which a program application is denied. Uh, it, we will continue to send a customized email to uh, the CE sponsor representative to indicate that program denial. So in terms of how you're submitting your program applications and the review processes and the communications, we expect this to be very much the same and with the similarities of the list of subject topics currently accepted and the job tasks and the principal topics which, were being, which are being implemented January 1, we, we are hopeful that this will be a seamless transition for all of our CE sponsors. Now with that said, the uh, list of topic exclusions still apply. The results of the job task analysis that Steve just described to you did not result in a revision to the topics excluded by CFP Board for CE credit. These topic exclusions include marketing, practice management, sales, and the other topics, uh, topic exclusions as outlined in the CE Sponsor Registration Agreement and in the online program application. And because practice management uh, is something that comes up from time to time and folks have continued to ask us, well, what does CFP Board mean by practice management? Just wanted to point out uh, that there is a definition for, of practice management and that this definition uh, outlines things such as office management, business model design, leadership training, and such that does not qualify for CFP Board CE credit, and this definition will continue to be in use uh, in 2012. Again, this definition is included in the online program application, and it's also um, available for review and reference in the CE Sponsor Registration Agreement. Now, I think I, I mentioned that the overall CE requirements remain the same. That is, the overall CE requirements as outlined in the CE Sponsor Registration Agreement, they do not change with the shift to this new list of uh, principal topics and job tasks. Requirements that are related to program duration, testing for self-study programs, the definitions for the different types of delivery methods and such remain the same. So while the list of accepted topics will shift to the list of job tasks and principal topics, the overall policies, procedures, and such remains the same. Uh, now, uh, shift gears and move to a topic that I think is of great interest to many folks in our audience today, and that is a focus on the 2012 CE Sponsor Registration and Program Renewal. As we uh, gear up and get closer to the new year, I'm pleased to report that we will have online registration for CE sponsors for 2012. We anticipate a mid-November launch date for online CE sponsor registration. This is in keeping with the schedule that we used for CE sponsor registration uh, for this year. And um, we will send an email to all CE sponsors to announce the date on which online 2012 CE sponsor registration opens. But at this point, you can expect that it will be a mid-November launch date. And we will provide email reminders to CE sponsors throughout the coming months. If you are a, a, an early adopter and, and register right away and you receive a couple of emails in November and December offering friendly reminders, feel free to delete those. Um, we will also provide a hard copy invoice statement. We understand that there are some sponsors who appreciate getting a hard copy statement for their records and files while some um, uh, don't need to have the hard copy statement. But for those who uh, do need a hard copy statement uh, for their accounting purposes, we will send out a one-pager uh, black and white invoice statement for your records for 2012 CE sponsor registration. We will also have a quote-unquote grace period through February 15, 2012 to register as a 2012 CE sponsor. So what this means is that uh, while your CE sponsor registration status expires effective December 31, 2011, you will be considered an active registered CE sponsor 
through February 15, 2012. If your company or your organization opts to not register as a 2012 CE sponsor by February 15th of next year, at that point we will drop your company or your organization from the CE sponsor registration roster. That means that we pull your company or your organization's name from our website and we no longer show your programs as active when certificates or CSP professionals are online searching for um, accepted CE programs that they can use for their CE requirements. This applies to general CE sponsor registration as well as to the ethics CE sponsor registration for 2012. Now in regards to 2012 program renew renewal, again, CSP board will use the same online process for renewal of eligible programs. Eligible programs are those which meet CFP board CE requirements and title, content, duration, and such. The CE sponsor staff is reviewing program information for active programs accepted prior to the implementation of our 100% program application review process to ensure compliance with published CE requirements. What this means is that we know that we have a small number of providers who have renewed programs over and over and over again. So we actually have programs in our records that were initially submitted to CFP board perhaps back in 1998, 2000, 2004. Uh, what we're doing is we're taking a look back at our older records just to make sure that the programs continue to be in compliance with CFP board's published CE standards. Um, most of what we've seen are uh, the need to update program descriptions and dates. There are some programs that might reference 2006 materials or uh, a 2008 update. And so we'll reach out to the small group of sponsors that might be affected by this to work with them to get these programs they may want to renew updated as needed. We expect that the online program renewal system will launch in mid-November. And again, we'll have an email communication go out to all of our CE sponsor representatives to announce that the launch date. But at this point, for your planning, you're considering renewing any active programs for use in 2012, um, expect that you can, you can begin to use the online system for that renewal in mid-November. And again, uh, as with our CE sponsor registration, we will have a grace period for program renewal. Uh, programs that are active for 2011, they will expire effective December 31st, 2011, um, but they will maintain their active status through February 15th, 2012 to give the organization or company an opportunity to decide what program or programs they may want to offer next year. Um, however, once that February 15th date comes, if there's a program or programs that have not been renewed, at that point um, the CE sponsor staff will begin to shift those programs into an inactive status. Now for the ethics CE programs, we have about 80 ethics CE providers and things will be a little different for them. Um, for ethics CE programs, we will not have an online automatic renewal option for 2012. Um, this is due to the unique status of CFP board approved ethics CE programs and the recent changes to the ethics CE program requirements. Um, again, because of the changes and the unique nature of these programs, we will not have an automatic renewal for ethics CE programs. And just to be clear, this is CFP board approved ethics CE programs that focus on ethics at uh, CFP board's ethical standards. All of the ethics CE programs will expire on December 31st of this year. Any ethics CE sponsor which wishes to renew an ethics CE sponsor program will need to submit the program, all of the materials associated with it, to CFP board. We understand that we have a number of providers who will want to renew their ethics CE programs and so our staff is prepared to con uh, conduct much expedited reviews of these materials. 
Um, why we are doing this is because we want to work with the ethics CE providers in connection to the new ethics CE program requirements. We will be reaching out to the small pool of ethics CE providers who may be affected by this so that we can proactively work with you in regards to your renewal needs. Now, for those who are considering submitting new ethics CE program applications, there is no change to this process. The new ethics CE program applications will continue to require submission of all program materials, attendance confirmation information, advertising materials, and the like. The only addition to this is that we are asking for information in regards to the instructor. A bio, the name of the instructor, is sufficient. Now, I think that you all have seen recent communications from CSP board in regards to ethics CE programs. And I wanted to take a few minutes to discuss these ethics CE sponsor program changes, um, not only for the benefit of those who are ethics CE sponsors, but to make sure that there's no confusion amongst our general CE sponsor audience in regards to what the changes are and who they impact. And for those of you who may consider diving into ethics CE education, this is something that you'll need to be aware of as you consider your plans for next year. Now, we had changes in connection to ethics CE sponsor program requirements go into effect as of October 1st. What this means is that as of October 1, 2011, all new ethics CE programs must include six learning objectives that have been identified by CFP board. The learning objectives are posted in the CE sponsor section of CFP board's website, so I won't go through all of them right now. Um, but if an ethics application uh, was accepted by CFP board prior to October 1st, don't be alarmed. The ethics CE program is accepted through 2011 as is. Now there's also a set of instructor criteria. Ethics CE instructors must meet certain requirements as of October 1st in order to be eligible to teach CFP board approved ethics CE programs. With this change, all ethics CE instructors must meet the instructor criteria as of this past week. Regardless of the date on which an ethics CE program was approved, all ethics CE instructors must meet the criteria. But it's important to note that this new instructor criteria only applies to individuals who are teaching CFP board approved ethics CE programs. This instructor requirement change does not apply to individuals who are teaching general CE programs. The instructor requirements for those who are teaching general CE sponsor programs remain unchanged. Now, for ethics CE programs, again, we're focused on ethics CE only. Let's look at this information another way. Consider the date on which an ethics CE program application was submitted to CFP board. If there was an, a program that was already accepted by CFP board for calendar year 2011, there is no need to change that program. Ethics CE sponsors can revise the program if they like, but the program is accepted as is for calendar year 2011. For those who are considering submitting new ethics CE program applications this week and in the future days, as of now, the ethics CE programs must include the learning objectives and meet the new ethics CE program requirements. Now, because of the timing of the year, we expect that in practice, most ethics CE sponsors have already submitted their program applications for programs they plan to conduct in 2011, and that folks who are considering updates or changes to ethics CE programs are looking more towards 2012. And so at this point, uh, for ethics CE providers or for those who are thinking about uh, offering ethics CE programs as you're considering uh, new applications or updates to your programs, 
um, please refer to the six learning objectives and ensure that those learning objectives are being covered in the program. Because the instructor requirement went into effect this past weekend and may affect ethics CE programs to be offered through the rest of this year, I did want to take an opportunity to run through the criteria. Um, there may be some of you who are asking why is CFP Board implementing this criteria? Um, and it's because studies have shown that adult learners want the opportunity to interact with the instructor before, during, and after the program in order to address questions in order to address questions and comments regarding CFP Board's ethical standards in a credible manner, CFP professionals want to hear from someone with experience as a CFP professional in the practice of financial planning. These requirements are also consistent with best practices and continuing education. Now, the first requirement is that all CFP Board continuing education requirements must be up to date, and all CFP Board renewal and other fees must be paid in full. Uh, the instructor must have been a CFP professional for five years or more. We want the individual to have some experience as a CFP professional. The instructor must not be the subject of a pending investigation by CFP board or any federal or state regulator. The instructor must not have been the subject of CFP board discipline, i.e., private censure, public letter of admonition, or suspension received within the past five years. It's important here to also note that this instructor criteria, these instructor requirements for ethics CE programs also apply to the authors of self-directed self-study programs. And again, to reiterate, the ethics CE instructor requirements apply to CFP board approved ethics CE programs only. This information is all posted in the CE sponsor section of CFP Board's website for those of you who may want to review it in more detail. And with that, uh, we've wrapped up a lot of our lecture portion of our program, but did want to share with you a number of resources so that if you have follow-up questions on the content we've discussed today or any other items related to the CE sponsor program, got some resources, resources to share with you. First, for any general inquiries or requests in regards to the CE Sponsor Program, you can always reach out to the CE Sponsor team directly. Uh, we have a dedicated email box at cesponsor at cfpboard.org, and we have a dedicated section of uh, CFP Board's website. I've listed the, the names and contact information for our staff. Um, again, we've included the CE Sponsor email box. We encourage the use of this email box because this CE Sponsor at cspboard.org email box is monitored daily by multiple staff. And so uh, if someone is on vacation or out sick, um, with, by using this email box, we always have someone who's keeping track of the emails that come in. But of course, we're always happy to speak with you and provide assistance, so please feel free to get in touch with us directly with any questions or um, assistance that we can provide to you. Uh, in regards to the job task analysis, CFP Board's examination, the exam blueprint, those sorts of things, uh, please feel free to connect with Steve Barkley directly. Um, again, we have, um, the uh, list of uh, job tasks and principal topics posted on CFP Board's website. We will uh, follow up this uh, program with an email to CE sponsors in the coming days, which will include the link to this information. Um, I want to reiterate again that with this change to the principal topics and job tasks, these job tasks and principal topics are very similar to the subject topics you're used to seeing in connection to CFP Board's accepted topics for CE. And with that, um, I will shift gears and we'll go into some questions and answers. We have um, a few questions that have come up. And uh, so we'll start with a question that came in. We had someone ask if we could repeat when the 2012 registration and renewal would be available 
And again, we're expecting a mid-November launch date for online CE sponsor registration for 2012 and online registration for uh, online program renewals. We will send an email out to all CE sponsors when that date is confirmed so that you can go ahead and uh, get your sponsor registration and program renewals in for 2012. We have also, uh, well again, how will I know when the registration and renewal is open? Um, again, we will send an email out to all of our CE sponsors to alert you to the date on which that online capability will be available to you. And we've got a question that says, where and when will the list of tasks, principal topics, and subtopics be available? Uh, there are actually links on the homepage of CSP Board's website with the principal topics and tasks. We'll have links available in the CE sponsor section, and we will have an email that will go out to everyone um, uh, regarding these links. And then it says, I was hoping that the seminar would be focused on how a CE sponsor could work with CSP members. Will you cover this? Um, well, first comment is um, CFP Board is a certification organization as a credentialing organization. Unfortunately, we do not have members. Um, we have CFP professionals who have an education requirement whereby they are required to complete 30 hours of continuing education every two years as part of their renewal. And uh, the CE sponsor, the nature of the CE sponsor program is such that we don't actively engage in, um, in advising or, uh, or uh, getting into the granular detail of how providers can work with their attendees or potential attendees, but that's food for thought as something that we might consider for future discussion. Let's see, we have a question that says, will there be an easy way to re-register courses for CE, or will all courses have to be re-entered again in 2012? Um, the, the purpose of our renewal process is that our CE sponsors will not have to do re-entry of data in new program applications. Our hope is that we will use this online process where the information is already available in your secure online account and uh, that removes the need for you to do um, any kind of uh, significant data entry. Got a question that says, just in case it's not covered, do the new rules Noted regarding instructors required to be CFP in good standing also apply to authors for a self-study course. The email reminder sent out earlier seems to speak to instructors of live events or webinars. Uh, this question looks like it relates to the new ethics CE sponsor instructor requirements. Um, again, uh, the new instructor requirements are for ethics CE instructors only. These are individuals who are teaching CFP board approved ethics CE programs. Um, in regards to self-study programs, the answer is yes. The individual or individuals who are putting together, who are the content developer or the author of a self-study ethics CE program must be uh, someone who meets the ethics CE criteria. For self-study courses, why does the CFP board not consider having a rolling expiration date of those courses? Um, it's something that has been considered, but when CFP board shifted to a calendar year annual basis, uh, part of the rationale for this was that we wanted to ensure that co courses were kept up to date, uh, information changes so quickly particularly given the financial planning environment that we're living in. And so by having an, an annual calendar year process, the, uh, this is our effort to ensure that uh, the material is, is kept up to date. And uh, in terms of how this uh, works for the CFP professional, uh, we go by the, the date on which they've registered for the program. And so if someone registered for a self-study program in December 2011 and completes it in February 2012, we will grant them the credit 
uh, for that program, even if the CE provider decides to not renew that program for 2012. Uh, next question is, uh, will you provide a copy of this deck? Uh, yes, we will have this uh, webinar that's being recorded, and we will have the, the webinar and a, a PDF of the PowerPoint materials posted to CFP Board's um, website within a uh, couple of weeks. And then in regards to uh, the ethics PE programs and instructors, will there be a specific form for instructors to fill out? Um, at this time, we are not considering using a form. Uh, we simply ask that for new ethics PE uh, program applications that uh, an instructor bio or name of the instructor be included. Um, for those of you who are, who are considering ethics PE programs, Know that a CFP professional as part of their ethical standards is required to tell you up front if they are qualified to teach these materials. So if you are considering engaging a CFP professional to teach an ethics CE sponsor program and you ask that individual how many years they've been a CFP professional, they're, they're ethically bound to tell you that. Um, we also have a quick verification link that we will send out to folks. It's, uh, I think we've already sent it out in a previous communication. Um, it's on CFP Board's website, and it allows one to simply enter in the name of an individual and uh, I think the, the city state that they're in, and you can look up a person and it will tell you um, whether or not that person is a uh, CFP professional in good standing, if they have any disciplinary history and such. Uh, I've got a question here that says, how does a CE sponsor change the number of CE credits a course is currently assigned during the online renewal process? Um, for a situation such as that, we would ask that the provider get in touch with a member of the CE sponsor team um, so that we can work with you to uh, make that change. So if you um, have a course for which you want to increase the number of CE credit hours or decrease the number of CE credit hours, um, send an email to the CE sponsor um, uh, um, email address or give uh, Christy uh, Callaway or myself a call and we can walk you through that process and get that taken care of for you. Is it possible to get a copy of the job task analysis data? If so, is use of this data permitted? Steve, I'll turn that one over to you. I'll take a shot at that one. Um, CFP Board does not release the raw data uh, gathered during the job analysis study. Um, however, the results of the job analyses are posted in terms of the uh, specific specific job tasks, all 97 job tasks and principal, and the, I believe, 78 principal topics are public information. If, um, if whoever asked, asked the question has a um, specific question in mind or whatever, you're welcome to reach out to me and I'll talk to you offline. Our next question says, we plan to offer an updated ethics course in 2012. Uh, may that course be submitted, uh, may we submit that course in 2011 to avoid the crush of applications in early 2012? Um, we're happy to uh, accept that new ethics CE sponsor program application at your convenience. If you'd like to send it in the coming weeks, that's fine. If you want to send it in after the new year, that's fine as well. Um, our next question is, what are the requirements for CE instructors, regular, not ethics? Uh, the language in the CE sponsor registration agreement for instructors for general CE programs states that the instructor must be qualified. Um, there is no definition of what qualified it, uh, means. It's left to the uh, best determination of the CE sponsor to determine whether or not the individual is qualified to teach the material. Um, our next question is, can there be a CFP moderating the ethics program also have another individual assisting him that is not CFP certified? Um, the answer to this question is no. All of the instructors for an approved ethics CE program must meet the new ethics CE instructor requirements. I, and at this point, I, I think I've gone through all of the questions that have been submitted. 
I, uh, if there, anybody has any additional questions, so, you know, feel free. We've got some extra time here. But in terms of the questions that uh, were submitted throughout the, the program, I think that we've covered them all. Uh, uh, we're not seeing anything come in. Um, Steve, do you have any closing comments that you want to make in regards to the job task analysis? Just again, that uh, the results are posted on the, the home page of the CFP board website. When you have an opportunity, uh, you might want to begin to become familiar with the new job task and the updated principal topics and see how, the, um, how they fit with your program offerings. And again, I know that we talked about um, making a change to the topics that are accepted for CE credit effective January 1st, but I want to reassure our audience that the principal topics and the job tasks that are being implemented as of January 1st are very similar to the list of subject topics currently accepted for CE credit. Uh, it looks like we did have another question come in. Can a CFP instructing an ethics course get credit for his or her ethics requirements? Um, at this time, an instructor can get credit for teaching the program, but it's general CE credit. Um, the discussion that we've had in regards to the ethics credit is that when the instructor is engaged as the instructor of a program, they're in a different mindset than they are from when they are participating in the program as a student. And so currently, the uh, teaching credit that is provided is for general CE credit only. Uh, we've got a question that's come in that says, if a code of ethics course is approved with one instructor, can another instructor present it if they meet the requirements? Um, as long as the ethics CE instructor meets the criteria, they're welcome to, to teach the program. Um, the, the key here is that any instructor that teaches a CFP board approved ethics CE program must meet the instructor criteria. And again, uh, you know, it looks like uh, those were the last couple of questions that have come in. We don't have any additional questions. Uh, it looks like we may have one more. My IT tech is pulling it up. Oh, looks like we've got two more questions that have come in. Can new courses be submitted for approval currently? For example, if we want to do a new program September 1, can we submit it now? CFP Board is still accepting program applications for 2011 programs. So if someone has a CE program that they want to offer in this calendar year, you are welcome to submit a program application online at your convenience, and we will respond within seven business days. It's actually been about a three business day turnaround lately, and so you're more than welcome to submit that program application. Just understand that because we operate on an, an annual calendar year process, that the program will expire effective December 31st. Then we have a question that's come in. For a 2010 ethics self-study course renewed for 2011, not new in 2011, does the instructor requirement apply? The program would be, continue to be accepted in 2011 as is. However, should the company or organization wish to renew the program for 2012, the instructor, the author, the subject matter expert would need to be a, a, a CFP professional who meets the instructor requirements we reviewed today. Again, we, we still have a, a few more minutes left in the program. If there are any additional questions, we're happy to, to answer them. Uh, we've completed our prepared comments for today. Our, our main takeaways for you were that we wanted you to be assured that we would have online CE sponsor registration available for 2012 CE sponsor registration, and that we would have online program renewal available for 2012 CE sponsor programs. Um, and then if there's one takeaway from this whole program, it's in regards to the implementation of the new topics accepted for CE, and that is that the job tasks and principal topics that we've discussed today 
are extremely similar to the CE topics that are currently accepted. Okay, we've got a question that says, what about a reduced fee for self-study courses submitted mid-year? Um, at this time, CP Board is not considering any type of uh, new fee structure. The fee structure that was announced for implementation effective January 1st, 2010, that remained in use for 2011, will remain in use for 2012. And uh, so at this time, there is no um, uh, reduced fee for program applications that are submitted uh, mid-year. And at this point, uh, I'm going to give one last call for questions. And uh, we've got about seven minutes or so, but uh, uh, oh, we've got another one that popped up. Let's see. It says, the ethics CE instructor may be of a different mindset in presenting the ethics program, but the preparation time in presenting the program should be considered giving the instructor the ethics CE credit. Most CE programs allow instructors to earn their the respective credits given. Um, thank you for that, that comment, and that's something that's certainly um, under consideration. Uh, but at this time, the, the, the practice has been to provide the uh, instructors um, with general CE credit. And just seeing if anything kind of scrolls into the system. See, when submitting the new CFP ethics course, is there a form to submit or do we just send the course with the bio? The ethics CE program application requires the hard copy submission and there is an ethics CE program application that one can download from the CE sponsor section of CFP board's website. Um, we're happy to provide that link. Um, if the person who's interested in submitting a new um, ethics program wants to get in touch with our staff um, by phone or email, we're happy to um, provide direction to that link. But there is a, an actual application form that accompanies the, the submission of the ethics um, CE material. Okay, with no other questions coming in, um, at this time I want to thank everybody for your time. We know schedules are extremely busy and we appreciate you taking the time out of your days to join us um, to hear this information. If you have any follow-up questions for myself, for Steve, um, we are happy to uh, engage in dialogue with you. Feel free to give us a call, send an email and uh, we will be in touch via email shortly uh, with the links and whatnot that we've discussed today. And with that, um, I'll go ahead and close this, uh, this webinar. Thank you for your time. Have a great afternoon. Thank you.